Hi, I'm your Minna Van Dyken, MD. I'm a surgeon by trade, but my true passion is helping people just like you obtain optimum health by adopting a whole foods plant-based lifestyle. Today I want to address a very confusing issue, the issue of kimchi. Is it healthy or is it not? There's a lot of information out there on kimchi, both good and bad, and enough to easily confuse anyone that's interested in the topic. First disclaimer, not all kimchi is created equal. There are over 187 different kinds of kimchi in traditional Korean cuisine. There's commercial kimchi versus homemade kimchi versus traditional kimchi. There's a type of kimchi that's even been created by scientists to be what they are calling preventive cancer kimchi. And research is finding all these types of kimchi to be very, very different. First off, let's review what kimchi is and how it is made. Kimchi is a traditional Korean food and is a really generic term to describe a highly varied group of salted and fermented vegetable foods. Kimchi has been prepared and consumed since the 3rd century AD. Initially, radish was the major raw material. Later, baiechu cabbage or Chinese cabbage, red pepper, and other spices were used for variety. The typical kimchi eaten today has been produced and consumed since the 18th century. It's traditionally made at home and served as a side dish with meals. Let's briefly review how kimchi is currently made. Chinese cabbage is trimmed, washed, brined overnight in a 10% brine, and then rinsed. Other ingredients are then added and typically include garlic, red pepper powder, other vegetables, and sometimes salt fermented fish, usually anchovies. The mixture is then fermented at a cool temperature, preferably around 5 degrees Celsius. Precise fermenting protocols will dictate what types of bacteria become dominant. Commonly, we see lactic acid bacteria, such as Lactobacillus planarium and Wysela carensis. Commercial kimchi, though, has been found to have slightly different bacterial ratios when compared to other varieties, such as homemade or traditional. So, how does kimchi impact our overall health, and why is this a controversial topic? Well, let's talk about it. First and foremost, kimchi is a fermented food packed chock full of probiotics, which are bacteria that are beneficial for our microbiome and overall health. Kimchi is also a low calorie food. It contains 18 kilocalories per 100 grams, and it packs a nutritional punch. It contains high levels of vitamin C, beta carotene, beta vitamins, minerals such as sodium, calcium, potassium, iron, and phosphorus. It's also a high fiber food weighing in at 24% fiber. Other ingredients such as capsaicin, allele compounds, gingerol, isothiocyanate, and chlorophyll help to round out the nutritional profile. On top of that, phytochemicals found in kimchi such as benzyl isothiocyanate, indole compounds, thiocyanate, and beta cystosterol have demonstrated anti-cancer, anti-obesity, and anti-atherosclerotic function. Whew! Critics of kimchi state that it and other fermented vegetables cause stomach cancer. Dr. Michael Greger from nutritionfacts.org made a video on this in 2010. Dr. Greger is amazing and I've spoken personally with him on multiple occasions and I respect him greatly. I do have a couple issues with this particular video though. First off, it was made in 2010. That was seven years ago. There's been much more data brought to the forefront since then. The two studies the video cites are retrospective reviews of patients that were diagnosed with cancer. Basically, the scientists asked breast cancer patients what their eating habits were and they correlated dietary patterns with their diagnoses. Then they compared them to a group of hospitalized patients that did not have breast cancer. These were also studies with relatively small populations, less than 500 subjects. The breast cancer study was done with 358 patients and these subjects were all hospital patients, not a good representation of an average population. The other study was done on prostate cancer and was done with 130 individuals. The downside of a small sample size is that it's very difficult to correlate this to entire populations. The Epic Oxford study, for example, the study I quote all the time demonstrating the power of a whole food plant-based diet, was done on over 500,000 individuals, half a million people. Another issue I have with the study, and most importantly, is recall bias. Asking people retrospectively what they ate has been known to be inaccurate. Lastly, and most importantly, these studies don't differentiate between pickled vegetables and kimchi. To me, these are very different foods with completely different properties. Pickled vegetables are essentially vegetables dropped in soy sauce or salt solution, and they sit there. Kimchi is made very differently. You take cabbage, you soak it overnight in a salt solution, you rinse the salt off, you repeat it, then you add the other ingredients and ferment. 
This allows salt and other harmful chemicals to be fermented out of the solution, making it less harmful and in many cases beneficial at the end of the day. Contrast that with pickled vegetables that sit in the salt brine. They continue to have the nitroso compounds and the high salt, which can be a toxic thing. Let's back up and discuss the anti-cancer effects in more detail. Kimchi exhibited anti-mutagenicity. It basically prevented mutations of normal cells into cancer cells against aflatoxin B1 and N-methyl N-nitro N-nitroso guanidine, otherwise known as MNNG, which is a potent carcinogenic chemical. This is mostly due to regulation of apoptosis of cancer cells and the inhibition of inflammation. Kimchi has been shown to inhibit the survival or growth of various human cancer cells, including gastric cancer cells, colon cancer cells, osteosarcomatous cells, leukemia cells, and liver cancer cells. This has mostly been thought to be due to the beta-cystosterol and linoleum acid derivative found in kimchi. How is kimchi an antioxidant and an anti-aging agent? Well, kimchi contains chlorophyll, phenol compounds, vitamin C, carotenoids, dietary fibers, lactic acid bacteria, and other photochemicals from both the raw materials and the fermentation process. These compounds appear to remove free radicals formed in the body by acting as hydrogen donors. Scientists found that kimchi consumption moderated the increase in free radical production due to aging. Additionally, kimchi has been found to be such a significant antioxidant that it decreased ultraviolet-induced photoaging by a free radical scavenging. Basically, it slowed down aging from the sun. Granted, that was a study that was done on mice, but scientists found that kimchi promoted healthy skin in humans by increasing type 4 collagen and free radical scavenging. They also hypothesized this is due to high levels of chlorophyll, vitamin C, carotenoids, and phenolic compounds. Amazing stuff. Many studies have demonstrated the anti-obesogenic effects of kimchi. One study took groups of obese women and supplemented them with either nothing, freeze-dried kimchi capsules at 3 grams per day, or freeze-dried capsules at 6 grams per day. They also added an exercise, a measly one hour a week, and they followed their body weights. The group that was supplemented with kimchi lost more weight overall. They also enjoyed a decrease in visceral fat, which is the fat around your internal organs, and they saw a decrease in their triglycerides. This theoretically should translate to a decrease in the risk for cardiovascular disease and metabolic syndrome. What is interesting here is that the lactic acid bacteria present in the kimchi itself may be the reason for the lower cholesterol. These bacteria seem to metabolize the cholesterol we eat and deconjugate bile salts in the colon, thereby preventing reabsorption in the liver and thus decreasing cholesterol levels in the blood. In summary, kimchi has been shown to be beneficial for elevating your HDL, which is the good cholesterol, lowering body fat, and lowering triglycerides as well as LDL cholesterol, which is the bad cholesterol. Other health benefits of kimchi include lowering blood sugars and anti-diabetic effects. It's also been shown to enhance immune cell growth and function. So what about those negative effects of kimchi? Why are there so many kimchi haters? Kimchi contains a lot of salt. It also contains nitrosamines, nitrates, and nitrogen dioxide. Let's start with the salt. The consumption of salt and salt-preserved foods may induce DNA synthesis and cell proliferation that contribute to carcinogenesis or enhance the penetration of carcinogens. Salt compounds have been linked with stomach cancer and high blood pressure. While salt itself does not seem to be a direct carcinogen, high salt intake could result in atrophic gastritis through direct damage in the gastric mucosa. The gastritis results in decreased DNA synthesis and cell proliferation, and thus carcinogenesis, or creation of cancer. The average salt content of kimchi ranges from 2 to 5%. High salt containing kimchi ranges up to 9.5 to 10%, and has been shown to have co-mutagenic activity. This means it works with other compounds to promote mutation of normal cells into cancer cells. Typical kimchi containing 3% salt has been shown to prevent mutation of those very same cells. The kind of salt in kimchi is very important. Purified salt, sea salt, natural sea salt without bittern, baked salt, and goan salt have all been used to prepare kimchi. Anti-cancer effects of kimchi have been maximized by using goan salt or natural sea salt without bittern. Now, on to the nitrite and secondary amines produced during fermentation. The main source of these compounds is actually from the cabbage itself. After six weeks of fermentation, the amine compounds are reduced to almost undetectable levels. 
So therefore, it's of paramount importance that your kimchi is properly fermented, at least six weeks. Contrast that to your vegetables, your pickled vegetables. They are high nitrate compounds to begin with, high salt. They sit in the salt brine and they're not rinsed, they're not fermented and you just eat them. So they're the opposite of the kimchi and the fermented vegetables. Make sense? One of the many studies I reviewed is called Dietary Factors and Risk of Gastric Cancer in Korea. It demonstrated an increased risk of gastric cancer with radish kimchi and a decreased risk of gastric cancer with kimchi made from baiechu or Chinese cabbage. They theorize this is because radishes are a high nitrite containing vegetable and the nitrosoamines persist through the fermentation process. Most of the radish is the root, which is readily accumulating nitrogen fertilizer and nitrate contents are twice as high when compared to Chinese cabbage. So the baiechu kimchi, on the other hand, was found to have a decreased risk of stomach cancer when compared to the radish kimchi. We think co-ingredients of the mixture, such as spring onion, garlic, red pepper, ginger, and carrot, are thought to contribute to the negative association because these sub-ingredients contain high levels of beta-carotene, vitamin B complex, calcium, iron, potassium, phosphorus, and of course, dietary fiber. Let's talk for a minute about the cancer preventative kimchi that has been created by scientists. I wanna get my hands on some of that. Basically, they created a special type of kimchi that contained added mustard leaf, mushroom pear, Chinese pepper, and sea tangle juice. Sea tangle juice, I've never heard of that. They found that the cancer preventative kimchi reduced stomach cancer cell survival. So, it was shown to prevent the exact type of cancer that critics say it causes. Hmm. There's no doubt we need more well carried out studies on this topic. In conclusion, this may be a scenario where the dose becomes the poison. Most of these studies were done in Korea. If you think about it, the Korean population loves kimchi. Over 50% of their diet is fermented pickled vegetables. Kimchi is consumed during almost every meal and it's ranked as the second most frequently consumed food after rice. At this high dose, there's constant stomach exposure to salt and amine compounds that could promote cancer. We know a higher consumption of pickled vegetables has been linked to higher cancer rates. But again, pickled vegetables are not kimchi. They're two separate things and studies have just lumped them together. But onto the pickled vegetables, one study demonstrated that consumption of over 9.26 grams of pickled vegetables a day is linked to a tenfold risk of developing stomach cancer. That's just one tablespoon of pickled vegetables daily. So look guys, there's a big problem with the studies that are out there. The studies that are linking pickled vegetables with cancer are talking about pickled vegetables. Kimchi is lumped into that category, but to me, kimchi is not a pickled vegetable. Kimchi is a fermented food, and much of the harmful effects from the kimchi have been fermented off by the time that it's eaten. Pickled vegetables, on the other hand, maintain those toxic compounds and continue to be toxic and should be avoided. At the end of the day, what does that mean for us? How can we apply all this knowledge practically? Well, number one tip, first and foremost, try to make your own kimchi. Then you know exactly what's in it. And you know if it's healthy, you know if it's not. Remember, not all kimchi is created equal. The fish, the anchovy, and the kimchi, I think are unnecessary. And it's unfair to apply the blanket title of kimchi to all the research we discussed. Number two, low salt kimchi is much better for you. Try to get a kimchi with a salt level of less than 2.5%. Then, if you can, try to get kimchi made with goan salt or natural sea salt without bittern. Number three, eat kimchi in moderation. If you want to apply the pickled vegetable studies, you could keep your dose to less than one tablespoon daily. Number four, add exercise. The one study showed that even one hour of exercise per week in addition to kimchi will help you lose weight and lower your cholesterol. Number five, try to get your hands on cancer preventive kimchi or better yet make your own by keeping it low salt adding mustard leaf mushroom pear chinese pepper and sea tangle juice to the mixture then make sure it's fermented for a full six weeks good luck trying to find the sea tangle juice let me know where you find it in any case i hope this helps you guys to understand that optimally produced kimchi eaten in moderation can be one of the best healthy foods for us in our microbiome Remember, one tablespoon of kimchi contains about 10 to the fifth or one billion colony forming units that you can eat. Good source of probiotics, good for your gut health, good for your microbiome. And we don't have any evidence that it directly causes any sort of cancer. It actually has been shown to be cancer preventative. 
Thanks for watching guys. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you want to show us some real support, hit subscribe. Let us know in the comments below what you want to hear about as far as science and eating and we'll try to make a video on it. Thanks for watching and until next time, aloha.